Hi, I'm Femi OK, and you're in the stream. Today, painting for the people. We're here from street artists who are using creativity to demand social change. So we're looking for your artistic contributions today. Malika Volau is our digital producer. Mm -hmm. This is the way to get them to us, Malika. Yeah. We're tweeting us with hashtag AJStream. People mm -hmm. already are, luckily. So several people responded to our call to show us the street art in their neighborhoods. Take a look at some of the ones we compiled from you all. This one is out of San Francisco from Kim. This next one is a tribute to Marlon Brando, the American actor, and this one is out of Wales. And this last one is out of India, uh, and it's by the artist known as guess who so we want you all to join in you can join this conversation by tweeting us the art that you see or with your questions and comments now joining us in our studio we have Gaia he's a Baltimore based street artist and he spends most of his time painting murals around the world and his work has been featured in gallery exhibitions good to have you here and then on Skype in Beirut Yazan Hawani is a street artist in Lebanon in New Delhi, the street artist known as Daku. And as you can see, he works anonymously and we are keeping his identity concealed as is his wish. And in Philadelphia, RJ Rushmore is an art curator and editor in chief of the street art blog, Vandal Log. Gentlemen, it's great to have you with us. We'll be hearing from you in just a moment, but first a little bit of background. Now, could a painting convince you to see the world a little differently? For some socially minded artists, the best way of getting their message straight to the people is through the streets. Street and graffiti artists have long been used to urban spaces as a canvas for both their artistic expression and creative protest. While some have earned some mainstream success in galleries, others continue to use graffiti art to challenge the status quo, reclaim public spaces and show that change can actually happen. So today we want to talk about street art as a form of social activism. So Gaia, can you remember the very first time that you did a piece of art on a wall somewhere? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I began very young and it yeah. became, that was like my, my one goal in life was to become an artist and to become a street artist. And so of course I'm coming from a pretty privileged place growing up in Manhattan. Yeah. And um, it felt a little bit um, you know, you get that initial rush of breaking the law yeah. where, and where putting was up a it? piece can, can in the lower side that? of Manhattan. Right. So I can we go to your yeah. war that you, you first actually did? I mean, yeah, it was, it was okay. the, the first first one that I can recollect. It was freezing cold. I was extremely nervous. Yeah. And I had planted a bucket of glue adjacent to a parked car. Uh -huh. And I was so nervous that I could barely get the thing up. Um, nowadays, it's so rote or it's so regular to yeah. me that I'm constantly breaking the law and maybe a little bit too uh, relaxed. Really? Sure. How old were you when you did that? Uh, I was around 17 when I first began and I haven't stopped since. Wow. Uh, Daku, you, you, we cannot see your face, but we can see your work um, around New Delhi. What was it that made you start saying, OK, I want to do art and I, I'm going to do it around the walls, the streets in Delhi? I think my, my interest from, in graffiti comes from typo, type and typography. When I saw the landscape in Delhi was, was changing, and the, the, earlier there used to be a lot of uh, hand-painted signs around. Yes. And everything was becoming digital. So the whole world was kind of like starting to look same. So I, I started tagging the walls with Daku, which, which means bandit. And I started tagging with, with Devnagari script, which is like a lot of like half of the population in Delhi do not understand English, but they do understand Hindi, which is uh -huh. the local language. So I started tagging in local language to, uh, and slowly after, after like a couple of years, like a lot of people started knowing what yeah. Daku is and there are like a lot of rumors around it. So it's, it kind of like became a character and I kind of like, like that part about that. And tagging is, is, is basically putting your, your moniker, your name out there, so people know, ah, that piece of art was done by Daku. So that's your name, you're putting yeah. it out there. RJ, are there, are there great places to do street art and, and not so great places to do it? Like where, if you were trying to think, where's the maximum impact I'm going to have? Where have you seen that? Uh, you know, every city is different, right? In LA, you can't do stickers because it's a driving city. Ah. In uh, Philadelphia, we have a lot of stickers. In New York, you can do a lot of sort of ground level posters. Gaia's work is a great example. His early work 
these sort of life-sized ground level posters. So it really, every city has different things and that's what's so great about it. You go from city to city and find something new. Well, Yasin, for you, when we uh, talked about this show online to our community, we got this tweet. This is from Dana, a former member of the stream team. And she says, here's Yasin in action. This mural is now a modern Beirut landmark celebrating a cultural icon. And she shared with us some of your work in Lebanon. So for you, is there a favorite space that you have in Beirut or, or outside of the city? Or are there spaces that you think <laughs> call for your work more so than other spaces? Uh, well, I don't have any, if you want, uh, prejudice on the spaces where I want to people put my work, to be really honest. Uh, whenever I get the chance to, uh, or I see a place, it, it might not be very visible, it might be a small street, it might be even in a building that's in a high rush area, like the one uh, Dana contributed uh, in, in Twitter. Uh, but the main thing that, thing that I search for is kind of the link with, uh, with the city itself, because I believe that a good mural tells the story maybe of the city, of the people, or a person. Uh, and this is why, uh, this is I think the most important aspect, is not necessarily how many people are, people are around this uh, wall, uh -huh. but uh, the, the story the wall is telling, or the wall, you, wall will create after, uh, after I leave the wall. So Yasin, we're looking at some of your art right now. There's, I've got a, a, a piece here on my laptop. Tell us about this gentleman. He's got a wrinkled forehead, gray hair, cigarette hanging out of his mouth. What's his story? Actually, yeah, the, the, this is the, the, the bad version of this mural. But, well, it's very interesting. <laughs> Sorry about actually, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's actually what happened is uh, this was a homeless man that used to live uh, facing the American University of Beirut in Beirut. Uh -huh. And he was, uh, he was a homeless man. He, he was not very rational. He, was, he had a few psychological issues. And, but everybody loved him because he was uh, re really, really innocent. Uh, and he used to have a very perfect English, which is not a very common thing maybe in the streets of Beirut. And the story went that th there was a legend around him that he used to, uh, he was a professor at the American University of Beirut of physics, and that he passed away one day uh, during the cold. And the unfortunate thing is that everybody used to help him and used to help him, uh, used to, to try to help him in some way. And personally, I used to put some money at a local shop to give him uh, maybe cigarettes, maybe coffee, maybe food. And a lot of students used to do that. And one day, because of the cold, he passed away. Uh, and the idea is that after two weeks, there was a lot of uh, social initiatives around the city of Beirut that were declared uh, to try to help the homeless, very private initiatives. But after two weeks, everything died out. Uh -huh. So the mural had two objectives. Uh, the first one was actually uh, to tell people you do not need to hear a sad story on the news to start helping the homeless uh -huh. in the street. Uh, if you need a reminder, here's the wall. Uh, but also because this, his face was really synonymous with the street he used to live in. He was known as Ali from Hamra, uh -huh. and he was kind of one of the cultural icons on the street. And sometimes I see that what I do is kind of like writing a diary for the city. So, uh, so this, Yazan, this guy there's, there's quite a story to that, to that mural, which looks like just a, a very descriptive, a beautiful piece of art. There's a whole story behind that. Do you think that people walking by that knew that story? See, Gaia here is saying, no, no way, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, why are you nodding your head here, uh, well, Gaia? No, no. I, well, I just, I just want to say that it's like, it's really important to observe, like, you know, everyone says street art is universal. Right. Um, Visual literacy is like any other form of literacy. One has to have sort of uh, there's a big access. There's a backstory to that. What looks like there's, there's just an old guy's But that's on what the social wall. media does. Is yeah. it is able to tell us, or when you're actually speaking to the author? Yeah. Of course, I think that it definitely conveys that message, and 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 I think it does right well. But also, it's like you can't tell everything. Right. Well, you can, like you say, you can on Facebook, right? So you could say, ah. well, I'm on. I'm taking a photo of this mural, posting it on Facebook, and yeah. telling the story. People are seeing it, and then they're going to walk by on the street, and maybe they're going to re rem remember that story. And if sure. they didn't hear the story, there's a beautiful mural. Yeah, and do you and know what? If so I just scroll down things. underneath that Facebook page, it's, it it tells me the story, and then people are commenting on the story, and then they're sharing that story. It's, it, it's true. I agree. But but uh, there are two things uh, in this mural in particular. Uh, the face of this man was really known because. Uh, I used the same picture that was published in, in many newspapers mm -hmm. and many TVs. I, I used it on purpose I, uh, uh, to make sure that people would recognize the same uh -huh. image of this guy. Right. And uh, coincidentally enough, there was a taxi driver uh, who probably ha had never cared about art uh, 
and he stopped for 10 minutes while we were painting it mm -hmm. and really thanked us emotionally with a, in a very emotional manner right. without actually telling him the story of, the, of this man. This is one. And the second thing is I think uh, visually some messages are conveyed, would it be through the use of uh, calligraphy, but also uh, through the, your choice of your image. In this mural, I, I do agree that uh, there are some layers that can be interpreted directly, mm -hmm. but there are some other ones that, uh, that might not be conveyed as eloquently as I might right. uh, when I'm telling the story. Sure, of I understand. Malika? Well, well, it's interesting. Some people are saying before we even get to talking about the activism or the reason behind a piece of street art, we have to define what street art is. So Gaia, there's this tweet from George. She says, first, we need a definition. Um, and, and so picking up on that definition, this is one person's idea. This is Zayad who says, one friend of his considers street art on public property property inappropriate because taxpayers money is in used to repaint walls so street art can it include graffiti uh, is that a different category you, yeah. are, are you saying no or are you saying yes what, what are your thoughts on that so uh, once again I'm gonna provide a definition there's no commonly accepted definition for these terms and it's an umbrella category but I would say in order to differentiate between street art and graffiti we have to say that both have to be illegal because if you do a mural it's a mural it's no longer street art and so graffiti is intended for... Can you illegally do a mural? You can. You can ostensibly illegally do a mural. It's a lot and of work. And it begins to <laughs> yeah. break down the boundary. In places like Baltimore, Detroit, and other places all over the world, it's yeah. feasible to actually enact a mural illegally and make it seem like it's sanctioned. Right. But I have to say that it has to be illegal, and it is, street art is intended supposedly it's universal. It's intended for everyone. There are a lot of problems to universal, but graffiti is a coded language, um, also executed illegally, but it's only intended for those that can read it. And I'm not mm -hmm. talking about political graffiti, and that's mm -hmm. when obviously categories are loose and yeah. fluid. Mm -hmm. but, but, but this guy is saying that the, the issue is that taxpayers are, are going over, are, are having to pay to remove the work, which is silly because that's only because the city chooses to, right? Like, what if we said tomorrow that you know, New York City is no longer going to have uh, an anti-graffiti unit. And does that make it good or bad now, that it's street art and graffiti? So I, I, it's, that's like saying that protest is bad because sometimes people have to, police have to shut down protests. I, I, that's a weird way to get to a definition for me. All right. Um, let me just go back to Daku here. Daku, um, you did some interesting work, which uh, was with stop signs that are so realistic, they actually look like the real thing. So here I've got one here on my laptop, stop posing. And then I'm going to click through here. Stop hiding. Stop gossiping. Yeah. Um, and then it goes yeah. on and on. They are hilarious. I find them hilarious because I'm not sure that the people in Delhi actually knew that they weren't done by That's officials. That's public property. That's public property. So that to me yeah. is like, it's like a double joke. What was yeah, your intention? So, so, I think, so, so what happened is uh, during the Commonwealth Games, when the games were held in Delhi, the city had to look international and the government put these stop signs in the middle of like road and like they put the stop signs everywhere just to make city more international while nobody stops looking at the stop signs. And I find <laughs> this like, it's like it's a joke, like, you know, there's nobody else taking it seriously. So I thought, like, maybe just let me give it a meaning to it. All right. So I put these, like, just stickers, like, around 30, 40 stickers, and I put it, like, at the places where, like, outside a shopping mall, it says, stop shopping. And, like, that sign still exists. Well, and nobody notices that it's uh -huh. been two years, uh -huh. and it still says, stop shopping outside the shopping mall. So... What it's do you it's get, kind of like a... What do you get out of it, though, Daku? Because no, you're, you're hiding your face. Nobody knows who you are. And then you put these no. up and nobody knows who put them up. Or do they? Like, it's it's not... Daku is not a very big secret, but, like, it's still... Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I Worst kept like, secret no, in Delhi. Go, <laughs> yeah, like, I, I can't go out, like, and show my face. Otherwise, because there, there, there is an authority looking for... So who's who's vandalized this and like yeah. in fact as we say this like tomorrow I'm gonna like you know also vandalize few signs because well, what are you gonna do tomorrow tell us <laughs> uh, where should we look this, recently Indian government has banned like some pawn sites ah, and okay. uh, like and there are these like and also they put up these signs that says accident prone area which is like go slow and as a like caution I'm gonna like just change that accident prone to accident pawn 
Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. It'll, like, it'll kind of look like, again, Very like going funny. with the same, like, yeah. Yeah, so. Very funny. <laughs> I like Malika. Well, I, I'm, I'm, what I'm hearing from what you're saying is that there's a message whether or not people get the message or not. And so I, I found this tweet from Nassim, and he says, there is a message in every piece of street art. It expresses the true emotions of the community, and I would venture to say also of the artists that put them there. Um, but I want to play this video comment, RJ, and have you listen to what he talks about the message behind his work. This is Chip out of Arizona. This area is plagued, unfortunately, with some social ills that um, make people's lives difficult. In 2009, I started a public art project where I attempt to reflect back to the community some of the beauty they've shared with me over the past 27 years. And um, I hope this work is uplifting to people, you know, and gives them hope and helps them see things a little differently such that they are motivated to, to work for their dreams. Now, RJ, as I was playing that video comment, you should have seen Gaia's face. He was really excited, but I want to hear what you think as well as Gaia, because you, there were beautiful words in here. He's trying to uplift his community with this work. Are we asking too much of artwork, of a mural, or is that possible? Um, I mean, it's it's great that, that Chip uh, did the comment. He's a friend of uh, Gaia and I's, and uh, actually Gaia's been out there and, and seen the work in person and participated in it, but from, from my perspective as an observer, I, I think about the Navajo Nation, the area that he's working in, differently. And if I was going to drive through there, I would think about it differently and go to different stores and seek out his murals. And, and that's going to change and hopefully uplift the community. And yeah, I mean, I, I have a more positive impression of that part of the United States because of seeing Chip's murals, and I haven't even been there. So that must be uplifting in some way, right? Gaia? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think you have to think of the Diné, um people that occupy these reservations as being on the sidelines to touristic routes, like going to see Monument Valley. So in a way, this also has like an economic development side to it. But in terms of really getting back to human quality, um, it is, I, I, I would, I can't speak for anyone on the reservation, but having participated in the project, there is something really beautiful about being able to cross um, very highly constructed walls between us and be able to break those boundaries down with artwork. Um, so it is uplifting maybe insofar that people from the international community are paying attention to the plight and also the resilience and, um, and, and all the, the proud aspects of a culture in a particular place. So it, it well, brings like attention, it brings attention. Like you're saying, that people are going to monument, you know, to see the Grand Canyon, to see these national monuments and things like that. Well, now this community has monuments too, which, which is important for a community to have its, its own monuments. And people are stopping and maybe they're not stopping or whatever, but now they're not just something to drive through. They have their own monuments. There is something a little bit um, disturbing and or problematic about this notion of savior and having to come and uplift as if I can somehow dole out uplifting, um, you know, uh, emotions or sentiments. But um, if you can get beyond that and or try to speak with people um, accordingly, once again, it does become a kind of a megaphone to the rest of the world, of course. Well, but Chip lives there, so that's, that's right. you, but Absolutely. Chip lives there. Yes, yes, yes. So let me, let me just check in with Yazan here. Yazan, when you work on your next piece of art, are you thinking, how do I connect with people? What is the message that I want to give to them? Or are you just thinking, how is this going to look? This is going to look amazing as a piece of art. Are you, or are those two things absolutely connected? Okay, uh, th- th- that's a very interesting question because uh, it relates to many phases in my work. Mm. Now, of course, I, th- I think that uh, in what I do, there are two aspects. There is an aesthetic aspect, of course, which is mainly related to technique, to uh, how you paint, to the style, to the colors, and aesthetically how a piece fits in the urban landscape. Uh, but you also have a message, or if you want, uh, the, 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 the why and the objective of each mural. Uh, and I think that uh, that... In particular, if you want, uh, for, as my style, uh, yeah. you, you have to have two com- the combination of t- the two. Some other artists might choose to uh, to do one one extreme, like for example, just to scribble a message on a wall, yeah. and it might be really powerful, like say maybe revolution, but this is without any aesthetic. And some others might just do an aesthetic uh, aesthetic thing. I think I, I would be placed on these uh, this axis uh, quite in the middle. Uh, the other thing is I think that uh, what I try to do every time I see a mural is to actually go talk to the people around it mm-hmm. uh, and uh, to make sure that 
this mural actually fits in uh, in the urban landscape. And something when I told you that the, the photo you showed me, uh, it was not the best photo of the portrait I I showed you. It's actually yeah. for a reason. It's the yeah. first I actually had painted this wall, mm -hmm. and someone uh, actually they, threw uh, they some paint, paint on it. They the painted piece. over it. I, I've I've got that picture no, no, here. They, they threw paint on <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then some anonymous person actually then tw went again, and someone on, on your Twitter actually shared a photo of uh, uh, when someone, like a random person, just took yeah. a spray can and with uh, very amateur strokes retraced the face. And I <laughs> thought wow. this was a huge compliment. Wow. And then okay. so, so I had to uh, just, you know, put, put a few touch ups to make the face, uh, to continue the lines of this anonymous artist who wanted to make my piece, uh, b b he wanted to bring it back. This is why the photo you showed, maybe aesthetically, or the strokes yeah. are not the best. But I wanted to keep them, and this yeah. is uh, this was a core aspect of uh, why I redid the work. Right. Uh, it's because the city kind of there was a citizen who I have no idea who he is uh, wanted the piece back, and I thought this was a huge compliment, right. and just wanted it was to do it. Big compliment, Malika. Gaia, um, I would be remiss if we left this conversation without talking about one of the things that people online, uh, most of them, were telling us about, and that was about, quote unquote, selling out, the commercialization of art and artwork. <laughs> so Brooklyn Street Art writes in, real street art has no problems with authenticity, but commercial interests are muddying the perception of it. And I also want you to listen to this video comment from someone who picks up on that theme. I think the uh, essence of street art has eroded from its organic base. It's been commodified, um, commercialized, and gentrification has taken a big toll on narrowing who gets to participate in what spaces, especially since it was born out of a means of expression for those marginalized from fine art galleries and museums. But at the same time, I think you're seeing an insurgency of women in street art from theater in Lebanon to um, hip hop in Palestine, South American graffiti artists. Um, so that's that's a positive. So he mentions a positive, but gentrifying art as a gentrifier. Yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. I mean, one is seeing that um, with 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 the um, the sort of the commonly understood mainstream of street art is essentially um, development. So how do you revise a neighborhood? How does one change a neighborhood? Well, the cheap way to do that and to change the nature of a neighborhood that might have been impoverished or not a great place to go to is you have a bunch of murals um, executed by some of the finest artists in the world and they bring a lot of social media attention and then you've actually made people see the visual um, facade of the neighborhood, the skin of the neighborhood is expressed as a different aesthetic. You know, no, one you're that was, talking. You're basically yeah. talking about yourself, aren't you? Here. I mean, yeah, of course. Yeah. I've orchestrated I mean, you've run this twice. So, yeah. so why, why, Gaia? Did you? I mean, if we're talking about it in that in that sense, did you why made you do that twice? Yeah. So I also don't believe that there's necessarily an outside, or that to get really outside, one has to be extremely radical and give up the convenience and the comfort of almost every modern um, amenity. Mm. Um, I do believe that people are generally clamoring for development, but development that is in fact inclusive of their voice, um, so of, guy, of so their So Guy, let's cut to the chase here. Yeah. Do, do you get paid for your artwork? Yeah, all the all time, right. uh, absolutely. Yazan, do you get paid for your artwork? Uh, it, it depends on which one. All right, uh, Daku, do you get paid? No, I don't. Okay, uh, and RJ, I... when you're curating, um, is, is that something that you do professionally? Does, does the money matter? I think for the artists it does. If, yeah. if, if Gaia can be a full-time artist, his art is going to be better. And he'll still do, hopefully, some illegal work. Yeah. Um, it's going to be better. I, I, don't, I don't see, I, I get the selling out if, like, if you're just using your street art to sell sneakers. That's obviously a problem in, in some, I guess. But, um, but I don't see why, why being able to professionalize yourself as an artist is antithetical to all street art. Right, Gaia, yeah. Can, can I, I say something on that point? Yeah, yeah, go, go ahead. Okay, I, I think uh, that the way we're kind of talking about street art is too uh, centric on how it happens in the US. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just absolutely. To, uh, That's a very good point. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so leave us with, with, with a, a flavor from Lebanon. You've only got one sentence, then we're going to go to the post show. What's the one thought you want us to leave us with from Lebanon? Okay, first of all, graffiti in Lebanon or street art is very different in the sense that uh, although what I do so sometimes can be classified as illegal, but because graffiti Yasin does not Hawani exist... Hawani is a street artist uh, uh, from Lebanon. We are taking him, his heart, his heart, yes, and his art to our post show at stream.adazero.com. More street art conversation there. See you soon.
Hello again, this is the Streams Online Post Show. Good job we have it, because Yazan Hawani was in mid-thought and mid-sentence there. Yazan, start again. What did you want to say? Okay, I just wanted to say two points to something that has been said. Yeah. First of all, uh, I just want to globalize a bit uh, yeah. what has been said about street art, because it was too centric on what happened in the US, in my opinion. Uh, the first thing is uh, w the legality versus illegality or gentrification of uh, uh, cities. I think this question is really t uh, kind of in maybe it might pose itself in Western countries like Europe or the US. But for example, in Lebanon, uh, even although graffiti, you cannot dispose of public spaces uh, without any permission. When the cops come to ask us questions, if I'm just polite to them and tell, I tell them, look, do you like this wall? They tell me, oh, yeah, it's nice, you know, but do you have a permission? I tell them, no. They tell me, oh, you can't do that. But after like a few sentences, you just stay polite. Uh, they would let you go. Really? Uh, and even I once actually would, had would the Would they let you finish, with... Yazan? Would they let you finish painting or do you have to stop and then come back later? No, they, they let me finish. And even mm -hmm. I once got, I don't know if you, you can screen this photo, it's actually the cops were painting with me. They put their M16 <laughs> on the side, which is a, which is a military grade That's weapon. That's selling out. And they, they painting with the cops. A <laughs> <paint brush>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you could show the picture. You're a traitor. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, so, uh, so, so doing things Ill illegally is not really a kind of a, a stamp of approval of street art in Lebanon because yeah. it really does not matter because even if you do it illegally, you can escape with it. If you do it legally, uh, it's the same thing. It's just uh, 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 sometimes you just talk to the owner before yeah. doing it. I'm this not, is for the yeah. first. Yeah, I'm not trying to romanticize yeah, anything. Aspect. Um, when it comes to yeah. illegal versus legal. I mean, there are plenty of places where you can work informally, like Baltimore City, you're working illegally, but it's not um, some rock star mentality. Um, it's not an action movie. It's just literally um, cutting to the chase, you know, breaking down the boundary between, you know, yourself and the wall and the community. Uh -huh. Definitely. The, the boundary is already very loose in Beirut. So All you should right. come someday yeah. and yeah. see how it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Do uh, what you like. <laughs> now, I, I wonder. Yeah, that, that, uh, like, one idea, one idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Let me just ask you before you go to point two. Uh, Yasin, um, so if the cops didn't like what you were painting, would they have arrested you? Absolutely. Uh, I, I once had a problem with it, it was a bit political, and they, yeah. they actually wanted to arrest me. Yeah. But you know, you just talk to them, and I, we, we, they interrogated us oh. under a bridge, they searched everything. And after two hours, it was actually a journalist that was assassinated. It has the political oh. uh, feel to it. Yeah. But after two hours, we just were discussing. They tell me, look, we've never seen this, uh, such street, uh, such work on a wall. Yeah, can yeah. you paint my face? I told them, wow. of course I can paint your face. Can, can, uh, and after two hours, they let us go without any, nice. any questions. I just think, Yazan, just I just discussing. think you're a diplomat, right? I yeah, think, good diplomat. I think he's a, an <laughs> excellent diplomat. Let me hold on, hold tight, yeah. everybody. I know everybody okay. wants to chat. Let me just go to Malika first. Well, just further internationalizing this, I wanted to share one of the examples one of our community members sent oh. us. This is out of India. Vishal says, Jill Goradia, the artist, creates art on strong social themes using Bollywood iconography. And so if you take a look at this article that shows some of that art, you can see in this short little gif, this little video, uh, people putting up scenes from Bollywood movies, but they're to get people talking about themes like rape, prostitution, um, LGBT rights. Mm. So Daku, I, I know this is also out of India. Um, we got a question when, when someone saw this, this work in our community, we got this question about your own art and Nikki wants to know what inspires <coughs> you. Do you tackle some of those same themes? What's going through your head when you're painting Louis Vuitton slogan on a trash can. It's like that that particular artwork was is in at the road where which the road divides the shopping mall and and a poor neighborhood. So while there's one side there's Louis Vuitton and there's like Zara and all these like big brands, just hundred meters across the road there's like there's no elect electricity there's no water. So I feel like that that road kind of was dividing between like you know what what is the contrast stands mm. for. So I I put this like luxury pattern. It's on beautiful. A, on a garbage. It's the most beautiful so, skip yeah. I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like look at how all the sites, like, all the interesting things we're talking about, gorgeous. all the pieces we're pulling up. See, uh, Dakar, all these pieces I, are. Uh, sorry, go ahead. So, uh, sorry, RJ. Um, I was just really curious, Daku, how do you do this without people knowing it's you? Are you doing this in the middle of the night? What are the practicalities of trying to get that, that skit painted? Most of the time, most of the time I, I work at night. Yeah. Also, I, I have a day job and like this is not what I do full time. So this is my side thing and, and I, I do it like 
mostly at night where like when there's no cops out there like earlier initially like when we we're talking about cops yeah in that if you paint at night and if cops look at you they look at like notes jumping like when they they can see that like this guy is definitely going to give you some money because he's crazy to paint uh, and wasting all these spray cans on a wall and the first thing they come and look at the spray can cost yeah. and then start getting suspicious that this guy is probably rich and mm -hmm. he will definitely give some bribe yeah. so it's let, a very different let me just, uh, let me just go situation. back to the origin of this piece of art here for the for this for the skip here um uh, did you work out what the color scheme was going to be? Did you plot that out before you got to the skip? How did you know the skip was going to be your next piece of art? It's, it's when I'm traveling in the daytime, I, I look at the spots, I identify the spots, and this what, what you see is, is done with a very simple stencil technique, mm -hmm. yeah. and it doesn't take that long to you know paint this. It's probably take 15, 20 minutes to paint the whole piece. So it... I do the Reiki during the daytime and yeah. then I plan and, and paint so I can go out, get out of there quickly as soon as possible. Is there any adrenaline going on as you're, you're you know, stenciling that skip there? Are you thinking, do I have enough? <laughs> I was going to say cash, but I, I don't want to get there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what if the cops come up, what would I do? <laughs> like, so, but, yeah. now, but nowadays I, I started uh, painting with the orange jacket on, which, which oh, makes me look like I'm a so government clever. official. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. like when I when I especially when I go vandalize these stop signs, I go wearing the jacket, so it ah. it definitely looks like there's no, no cops. Like since I started wearing this jacket, I'm I'm like almost never got stopped this by is cops. So, so clever. I, I love this. Good. I love this. Uh, RJ, what did you want to add? Well, I was just gonna say that this is like you know you asked earlier about sites and where uh, what what sort of areas people should do street art in. All yeah. the things we're talking about, Yasan and Daku's pieces are not obvious sites. They're sites that are only work because of what's around them. I can't be like, go paint a skip. That doesn't make sense. But in that particular instance, it was yeah. perfect. Yeah. And I want to share this, yeah. um, this picture from your Instagram because uh, Femi showed one picture. This one I really, really love because you can see the juxtaposition. So you yeah. see the yeah, Louis Vuitton uh, logos and then you see trash, actual trash being used in this bin. So I think that's pretty eye-opening. Um, but I want to go to this next tweet, just shift the conversation just a little bit, Gaia. This is Pariah and she writes in, that's her handle. She writes in, I think that since we're sensationalized by visual cues, street art often causes us to think to remember and or to act. So I'm reading this tweet and I was reminded of a story that our producers told us ahead of the show and you had painted a mural in Baltimore mm -hmm. and um, a local man came by and saw it and what did he say? Did he get it? Did he understand? Because personally, I saw the mural uh, and I didn't get it. <laughs> Which mural are we talking about? I, I believe this one um, had a rooster head and oh, okay, uh, the body okay, of okay. a man. So this is in DC on H Street, um, not exactly in Baltimore City. I had painted this rooster man opening up like a messenger. The rooster is a messenger um, metaphor. Opening up his robe into a beer shot landscape, talking about the sort of the beauty of the Western landscape of the United States, but also the dark history of Manifest Destiny and how that relates to gentrification and the new urban frontier. You know, so I think I'm conveying all these deep messages that will hopefully exist as a kind of an oak tree in that community to stay there as the neighborhood changes. So when did you decide that that was exactly what you, did you think up that? Absolutely. Before you started like. Of, of course. Yeah. Nothing that I do deep, is deep improvised. Deep thoughts. <laughs> deep, right. deep thoughts. Deep, deep but thoughts. But I did cross the street and I went and to have a drink street. at the bar yeah. um, and I talked to the man working the door and I was like what do you think about this piece and he goes I don't know it's art you know what I'm talking about it's art I don't know and he was very much confused and when I sh when I told him that I was the artist he felt like I kind of tricked him a little bit <laughs> but I think it just goes to show you back again to this notion of visual literacy how can one read and uh, once again it's not a universal experience See, I but was, tries to be. Tries. I was walking to work I really today. I, I, I don't know how it happens. Sometimes my life actually then um, sinks into the shows that we're doing, which sometimes is good, <laughs> often not good. That's why you're the host. <laughs> yeah. have, have a look here. Um, I took this picture on my way to work, um, and actually just down to one side was, was some, some dog poop, so I took that out. But that actually, to me, said street art to me. But there were these stencil pictures and the alley by my house, and... Um, Malika said, well, you know who, they, who that is, don't you, Malika? 
Tamir Rice, who was uh, the young boy who was killed in Cleveland. So I was like, I know, I recognize that face. Um, what's, what's, the, what's more visual literacy that I need to understand this, Gaia? Well, exactly. I think this is a political statement that's trying to really get your attention yeah. and bring you to something direct. Yeah. Um, when you start to actually develop more complicated aesthetic language, you actually do begin to mollify or complicate political activism. So activism has to be extremely direct. But I don't know of anyone outside of the United States or hasn't been following the Black Lives Matter movement or even the police brutality or maybe yeah. even someone in the suburbs of D.C. would even recognize Tamir Rice. Yeah. Well, so like I'm you, just talking about these levels of media. Yeah, right? and so do you know what? Because it, well, I wasn't expecting to see him there. If I would, oh, clicked on an article and, and so I was like, oh, yeah. But it was like, the face is familiar. Um, but so, you uh, learned yeah. by then yeah. talking to your co-host. You yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So it, exactly. it created so, a social yes, conversation. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. I was also thinking, um, really I was also thinking, um, if I owned that side of the house, would I be delighted or would I be furious that it was on the side of the house. Do you even think about that, uh, Yazan, when you're doing your artwork? Do you think about whose house this is on? Will they be upset with me? De definitely. Uh, but to be very honest, like I told you, uh, street you art in, in my work, yeah, yeah in, in, in my art, yeah. I, uh, the, the aesthetics are very important yeah. to what I do. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I try to make a, a piece, whenever you see that, on, on the second you just see it, uh, it talks to you, and this is one of the most important, without any, even understanding the background, yeah. just by looking at it, you should feel something. And this is, yeah. I think, uh, something, especially with the Arabic calligraphy, that you cannot kind of define. Yeah. Uh, it's just with the shape. Uh, and this is why I think, uh, and I also look how this piece fits in the neighborhood aesthetically. Yeah. Uh, does it fit the urban landscape? Because mm -hmm. I think it's a big question to ask ourselves mm -hmm. whenever we're integrating something, so that this piece becomes a landmark and not just like a patchwork added on, on top of this. Do you know what I think, city. though, Yazan? I think that we're really lucky because we've got four incredibly intellectual, thoughtful people <laughs> who are thinking about what they're doing or where they're placing it. I am not convinced that everybody is having those deep thoughts that you're having. No way. I think some of it is not as thought out. It's true. Yeah? But it's part of the game. It's part of the game. Uh, exactly. Uh, this is uh, the case in all fields, but yeah. I think... Even some people write books without even thinking out what they're going to write, <laughs> yeah. authors or philosophers. Yeah. Uh, but they won't get but, published, but, but, but whereas on the, the street, one, I mean, it published. just takes, <laughs> you know, if, if you're doing a piece of street easier. art. Yeah, RJ? Yeah, exactly. if, you're, if you're doing a piece exactly. of street art, there's no, um, there's no barrier to entry, right? So if, you're, exactly. if you write a book, it won't get published if it's not any good. Right. If you do some graffiti or some street art and it's not good, it's, it's out there. So yeah, 99 that's the beauty of it, is there's a lot of bad yeah. work. There's yeah. a lot of bad work. Yeah. Wow. That's the beauty of street art, is that there's no boundary to entry. It circumvents exactly. curatorial processes. <laughs> well, the exactly. curator is the person but that the can most, then go the paint over it. Ones. Hold on a minute. Oh, the you, curator's only what retroactive. Gaia just, what did Gaia just say? Was he speaking English? What did he just say there? I gotta drop it sometimes, come on. <laughs> you know, we're, we're very intellectual, <laughs> thoughtful people, you know? All right, okay, we're gonna wrap this up. Malika, what do you have? Well, this is Ruayda, and I think she would disagree with you that there are some bad art, because she says, at least the people oh. on this show, your work is, a, is great. It's a pity that it's all illegal. I know social conscious has no price, but you could earn lots. Well done. All right. Uh, I feel like that has started off a whole new conversation, but I am not going to allow that to start. It's a post-post -post show. Um, yes. <laughs> and it's called The Internet and Twitter. Gaia, Yazan, Daku, RJ, I've really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you very much for making this a very accessible conversation and for sharing your art and your art thoughts on street art. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs>